the subject of their investigation, the Subway sandwich. And is there really tuna in the tuna sandwich? After a month of testing, the lab said it found no amplifiable tuna DNA in the sample. A new lab test failed to identify any tuna DNA in the sandwiches. Just when I thought I was out, they reel me back in. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that still believes there's absolutely nothing fishy about Subway's tuna. Friends, earlier this year we did an episode debunking claims that were made in an eye-catching lawsuit filed against Subway. The lawsuit, filed in January, alleged that lab test results proved the restaurant's tuna was, quote, a mixture of various concoctions that do not constitute tuna, yet have been blended together by Subway to imitate the appearance of tuna. And the attorney went a step further, asserting that the mystery meat inside of Subway Subway's tuna salad wasn't even fish to begin with. But things started to get fishy in this case about not being so fishy when it came to backing up their claims. The accusers here weren't very forthcoming. They refused to provide the media with the lab report, the name of the lab at which the test was performed, or any suggestion as to what the mystery meat might actually be if it's not fish. In our episode, we concluded that Subway almost certainly was serving tuna as advertised, and that the restaurant would ultimately walk away from the lawsuit unscathed just as they've weathered frivolous lawsuits and PR attacks time and time and time again in the past. And indeed, the events in the months since we released that episode seem to have proven our theory right. Last month, the plaintiffs more or less abandoned the whole tuna not being tuna thing and pivoted. Pivot! Now, with their new amended complaint, they're trying to sue Subway for misleading customers by saying that the tuna is sustainably caught, which might very well be a question worth discussing, but is an entirely different argument from saying that it's not tuna or even fish. TLDR of all of this, the plaintiffs have backed away from their original splashy accusation that grabbed so many headlines earlier this year, which suggests that they were probably lying in the first place. So, case closed, right? We argued that Subway is in the clear and was actually serving real tuna, not some unidentified mystery meat. That means today's episode is just gonna be one big old victory lap for food theory, right? Well, let's keep that champagne on ice for just a moment longer, because new information has come to light. Just two weeks after the plaintiffs pivoted and filed their amended complaint, Julia Carmel of the New York Times published a story investigating the claims against Subway's tuna. The Times decided that the best way to settle the argument was with a lab test of their own to see whether Subway's tuna actually contained tuna DNA. Seems to make sense, right? But they quickly learned that the process wasn't easy. Carmel says in the article that there are a bunch of labs that, quote, politely declined my inquiries, citing technical limitations and company policies that made my tuna ineligible for analysis. But she did eventually find a place that was willing to do the test, comparing the DNA in Subway's alleged tuna to see whether it matched one of five different tuna species. Interestingly enough, the New York Times did not name the lab or release the report. According to Carmel, a spokesman for the lab, which specializes in fish testing, quote, asked that the lab not be named, as he didn't want to jeopardize any opportunities to work directly with America's largest sandwich chain. But here's what we do know based on the New York Times article. The lab performed a DNA test to see if it could match the Subway tuna sample against those five species of tuna. And the results were, drumroll please, negative. There was no match. The media naturally had an absolute field day with this, and if all you read is the headlines, you might be convinced that Subway managed to bamboozle all of us with fake tuna. After all, if the test was looking for tuna DNA, and the test came back negative for tuna DNA, there's no way that there is tuna in Subway's tuna, right? Well, there's a lot missing to that story, friends, and like so many things in this world, the whole truth is a bit too nuanced to fit into a tidy little headline. So today we're taking another deep dive into these accusations against Subway to show why we here at Food Theory are standing by our original prediction, even in light of the New York Times' seemingly damning lab evidence. Now, there are several reasons that we're sticking to our guns on this one, but here's perhaps the biggest one that the headlines failed to mention. DNA is destroyed by heat, and the New York Times sent cooked tuna to the lab for testing. According to a report by researchers at Bar-Alon's Institute of Nanotechnology and Advanced Materials, quote, we find that under 
dry conditions, complete DNA degradation occurs at above 190 degrees Celsius. That's uh, 374 degrees Fahrenheit for all my fellow Americans in the audience. The oven in your kitchen regularly gets hotter than that. And remember, that's talking about complete DNA degradation. Partial degradation can happen at temperatures below 190 C. Now, to their credit, the New York Times acknowledged that in their story. Quote, once tuna has been cooked, its DNA becomes denatured, meaning that the fish's characteristic properties have likely been destroyed, making it difficult, if not impossible, to identify. End quote. I think it's starting to become pretty darn clear why so many laboratories turn this case down, citing technical limitations or the tuna being ineligible for analysis. So, while the Times story succeeded in bringing more attention to the Subway tuna lawsuit, not sure it really added anything to the conversation at the end of the day. I mean, the plaintiffs in the lawsuit already supposedly have a report they refuse to show anyone from a laboratory they refuse to name. Did we really need the New York Times to do the exact same thing? The point is this, based on methodology alone, there was absolutely no scenario in which these lab tests were gonna prove Subway's tuna isn't tuna. Not only because the lab report can't be released, not only because the tests were performed on denatured DNA, but also because they only tested for five different species of tuna. But the truth is that here in the US, there are 15 different species of fish that can all be legally sold as tuna. It's like going into a house with 15 rooms to check for someone, then claiming that because you searched five of them and found nothing, the entire house has to be empty. The absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Furthermore, the New York Times story doesn't specify which of the five species of tuna it was testing for. And you know, this would be nice to know considering Subway claims it only uses two types of tuna in its sandwiches, skipjack and yellowfin. Now, I'd assume that the Times included those two very popular tuna species in their testing, but still, it's a bit frustrating that we even have to assume when it could have just been spelled out in the article. There is a reason when you do this sort of stuff that you have to outline your methodology. The problem here is that although the New York Times was able to arrange one DNA test of Subway's cooked tuna that came up negative, that in no way proves that Subway's tuna isn't tuna. It's entirely possible that a different DNA test could come up positive, because the science here, again, is questionable at best. And in fact, that's exactly what seems to have happened. Earlier this year, months before the Times story was published, Inside Edition did a similar experiment to the one conducted by the New York Times. They took tuna samples from three different subway locations. We bought the tuna at three subway locations in Queens, New York. Then they sent the samples to a lab, but unlike the New York Times' laboratory, this one was willing to be named. Our next step was sending the samples to Applied Food Technologies. The lab, based in Florida, specializes in DNA testing of fish. And the Inside Edition lab report came back positive. Yes, we confirmed that tuna was definitely in all three samples we received. So there you have it, a positive identification from one lab that Subway sandwiches do indeed include tuna DNA. So why then did Inside Edition stories stay so under the radar for the most part, whereas the internet, including Food Theory's comment section, got bombarded with the New York Times story when it broke a few weeks ago? Well, for one thing, it's because it's the Times. They're a huge news organization with a long and traditionally credible history of journalism. They're so renowned, in fact, that by simply publishing a single story, the New York Times can inspire dozens and dozens of spin-off stories from other news outlets. Outlets who, rather than carrying out the lab results themselves, simply report on the Times' reporting. And whereas the Times dedicates 2,500 words to the story and openly admit that some of the methodology was problematic, the vast majority of the spin-off articles don't have word counts anywhere near that high, and as a result, a lot of the same nuance doesn't make the cut. And of course, there's the inescapable fact that the negative lab result simply makes for a better, catchier headline. A piece of content that suggests, or even outright claims, that Subway's tuna isn't tuna, it's gonna attract a lot more eyeballs. And look, I get it. This is the internet. That's the game. For our first episode on this whole Subway tuna lawsuit fiasco, we could have just said, Subway's tuna is exactly what you always thought it was. Nothing to see here. But the fact of the matter is that thumbnail would have had a click-through rate of, like, negative two. The reality is that in this age of social media, branding and headlines are king. 59% of all links shared on Twitter, for instance, are shared without being clicked on first. It is a disgusting and terrifying statistic that suggests that most people, more than half, are sharing news without taking the time to consume it themselves. And so a punchy headline that doesn't show as much journalistic restraint as it probably should can easily spread across the entire internet in the blink of an eye. So that, friends, is why Food Theory is standing firm with our prediction regarding the Subway tuna lawsuit. Yet again, I'm standing by the giant corporation. Nuance is tough. That's why everyone hates it. But hey, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh, who sends recipes and meal kits to your doorstep each and every week. Steph and I have been on the HelloFresh 
train for months now, and I gotta say, I am loving it. First off, the meals are delicious. All of them. Every single time we try a new recipe, we are glad that we did. My diet has never been so varied, and it's all because the geniuses at HelloFresh are making the decisions for me to make sure that I'm eating stuff that's delicious and also good for my body. Second, the meal kits are really quick and straightforward. After only about 20 or 30 minutes, we get to sit down to a home-cooked five-star meal as a family. I'll take any excuse to bust out the old food theory apron, but when I get to bust out the apron and I get to eat the best garlic bread of my life, that, friends, is a good day. So go to HelloFresh.com and use the code FOODTHEORY14 to get yourself 14, count them, 14 free meals, including free shipping. Yeah, that is 14 meals taken care of, delivered straight to your door for the low, low cost of zero dollars. By the way, if you're worried about your meal kits arriving and you happen to be away on vacation or something, don't be. Steph and I are back doing a fair amount of travel again, and we have been consistently impressed with HelloFresh's flexibility on that sort of thing. We've been able to change our delivery days whenever we need to, and even skip weeks entirely. So now that you're out of excuses, head on over to HelloFresh.com to get yourself 14 free meals, including free shipping. Remember, use the code FOODTHEORY14 at checkout to let them know that we sent you. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory! Bon appétit!